Botanical Gardens have lots to offer a school and their community. Alberton Primary School has established a food producing garden and life sciences centre that not only encourages learning, but also engagement with community and businesses. Much of this has happened through the Garden Ambassadors Group. So the Ambassadors Group, I joined as a parent when I was still on maternity leave and it was initiated by the Occupational Therapist students and they were given a project which is to work with a garden to start figuring out how do we actually get this space working for the students. So the first attempt was to set up a small veggie garden which was managed by our special educator Lynn Lang. After Lynn had left, um, her patch was not particularly well um, looked after and so we were sort of had the beginning of a garden area. We were successful in um, getting a NRM medium sized grant and used that to set up uh, an aquaponics farm breeding silver perch and yabbies. Initially it started over in the Life Science Centre with a fish room and a handful of fish tanks and because prior to being a teacher I had a background in aquaculture I kind of inherited the fish room and everything's grown from then. So I get to use my background knowledge to build this aquaponics system for the kids and working with them on that. We received um, virtually a cold phone call from Simon, life sciences teacher at Alberton, and uh, just letting us know that he had a whole lot of produce available. In fact, it was fairly urgent because it was December and uh, with the school holidays, this could all have gone to waste. And it's the sort of produce that our cafe specialises in at that stage it was very ripe tomatoes and an awful lot of them and basil and they were the two main things but there are other things as well and that just fitted in with our mantra of fresh local food and given that it represented maybe two or three food miles it was just perfect for what we do and the fact that it was just so fresh and also unsprayed. Seeing the quality and the consistency of the produce we also got to talk to Simon about the possibility of him growing some produce for us, or at least mainly the kids in fact. This has been probably the most successful collaboration that we've been involved with with sustainability and it's given us a, a focus for our sustainability such that there's a model that's been created here which can be replicated in other schools. We had a few working bees to start to develop some of the infrastructure better and that um, attracted a number of parents who were interested in the space. That helped us to find Serena as one of those parent volunteers, um, incredible passion and knowledge in the area and from that um, humble beginning we then started to expand our gardens with Serena guiding the ship as an employee. Uh, when I um, came to help out what, the first summer uh, which was just a matter of staking up some tomatoes during the holidays. The garden wasn't very organised. It was um, kind of a little bit random and even to some degree I'd say a little bit unloved. Once I found out that um, Andrew had visions for the rest of the um, grounds outside this part of the garden. Um, I did a design up for the area uh, and then once that was sort of approved um, we took to trying to create that design. When my wife happened to pass uh, an old crate on the side of the road um, she inquired about that and it turned out Cheapest Chips had 50 of their old warehouse um, boxes that they were getting ready to, to get rid of and so Serena designed those um, boxes into what we call our pizza garden because of its shape. Um, from there we started looking at other building materials including um, hay bale construction and we had a huge um, amount of working bees developing towards our 125th where we had probably 50 or 60 different volunteers helping build our kitchen garden. Port Adelaide Enfield Council assisted with the new garden through helping to excavate the bitumen and delivering compost and soil and are now helping through volunteer programs. So we now have uh, two internal classrooms, our cafe which is a um, really a kitchen space, our life science centre classroom, we also have the aquaponics centre, the old toilet block as well as that we have three outdoor classroom spaces, one of them the large shelter that is, features a wood oven. We have what we affectionately call our onion and that houses an insect hotel as well. Food forest, we've got our chooks. Alberton Primary School has a bountiful food garden and is encouraging teachers to incorporate this into their lessons. 
it was underutilised for learning and we wanted to make that something that was a core focus for our students and every area of the curriculum. Kids come out to the garden and, and harvest uh, produce that they, they can use in cooking classes so that's something we're trying to develop there more and also taking produce to the canteen and so the canteen managers can use the produce in her cooking as well. Today I'll have my four students I'm actually hoping to get some seeds sown with them today so we can um, get a head start on the Malabar spinach out there. We've tried me running a few different classes and having markets after school. We've tried me working with small groups independently and now we're on to introducing the other teachers into this space and the garden and having them feel comfortable. So the ambassadors group, we, we started to dwindle off a little bit and we found this was probably a bit of a sign of people feeling like their job had finished, that we'd achieved the projects that we wanted to achieve and the time was just done for now, which is such a positive because it meant that we achieved those projects and we could look forward into some other projects. We have a canteen committee, they'll now look at how we can work with the garden and the cafe together. So while the core part of our infrastructure is now developed, there's still a lot of opportunities that the garden space provides for us. Um, we're continuing to um, have more and more children accessing the garden from a whole range of different angles. And that's, I guess, our ongoing challenge is to sort of see how we can use this incredible resource for other opportunities. After winning an NRM School Action Grant seven years ago to establish an aquaponics program, that sustainability focus has really grown even stronger and they are now able to enjoy learning from and sharing with their community on a day-to-day -day basis. You can find out more about NRM education by giving us a call or visiting our website.